Hi, I'm Dr. Kurt Wohler. I want to talk a little bit more about oxytocin. You know, I've spoken about oxytocin before through some of these videos, but I want to follow up with some very important information that I think will make sense to you with respect to your child or your loved one um, who's on the autism spectrum. Oxytocin, we know, is a hormone that is produced in all of our bodies. It's often called a social bonding hormone. Um, it has a regulation effect in pregnancy, um, specifically in delivery, because it helps cause contraction of the uterus. But it's also important for bonding of the newborn with the mother during breastfeeding. And it's critically important early on in newborn development with respect to brain regions that are involved in facial expression recognition, voice cue, emotional recognition, etc. As a therapy, oxytocin has been used to help with social anxiety and anxiety in general. In autism, it's actually showing benefit in individuals with respects to facial expression recognition, bonding, increased socialization, and again, many times decreased anxiety. And that's exactly what I've seen in my practice with oxytocin's use, um, is the decrease in anxiety, the decrease specifically in social anxiety, and just an increase in wanting to engage socially. Now it turns out that there's an area in the brain called the fusiform gyrus. The fusiform gyrus is within the temporal lobe. It's basically on the inferior medial aspect of the temporal lobe. And this particular area of the brain is specifically tied to facial recognition, or more specifically, facial expression recognition. And they can look at brain imaging scans, functional MRI, that shows an increased metabolic activity in uh, neurotypical individuals when they are looking at faces they recognize and a decrease um, functional aspect within this specific area of the brain in autistic individuals who just don't quite recognize facial expressions. Now they, they have more of a familiarity with faces they're familiar with, but people they're not familiar with, there's just not a lot of recognition going on and that clearly can lead to some of the social problems that we see and likely some of the anxiety problems that ensue in social situations. And it turns out that oxytocin actually helps to excite this particular area of the brain. It actually increases the activity within the fusiform gyrus. So that's very interesting from a functional standpoint within the brain of an area in the brain that's often dysfunctional in autism is now being activated and improved with oxytocin therapy. Two ways to do oxytocin. Um, <clears throat> that are helpful in autism that I've experienced. One is a nasal spray, um, is, is a very useful form, and also a sublingual tablet, which I've had success with as well. So there's a couple options that I use in my practice. These both come from compounding pharmacies, um, often just once a day, sometimes twice a day, sometimes three times a day. So there's not a set amount or specific uh, range that, that is um, specified for each age or weight. It's just a, sometimes you have to explore different ways of dosing it or get a sense of how a particular individual responds. But typically, at least once a day or twice a day seems to help most individuals, whether you're using the nasal spray or the sublingual tablets. Okay, so that's some basic information about oxytocin therapy. Thanks.